Welcome to Living Springs. These are your announcements. Evening service, Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday, prayer 6 p.m., service 6.30. Intercessory prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Men's, Women's, and Youth Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Men's Breakfast and Paint, April 6 at 8 a.m., Living Springs. Guest Speaker Deke Silverman, April 14th. Women's Meeting, April 14th. Hey, Church! We need volunteers. LS Kids, LS Worship, LS Nursery. Ask a leader today. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight on this Wednesday evening. Welcome to those who are new, who are guests. We're happy to have you here tonight. Um, if you're willing and able, we're going to stand and worship tonight. We're going to sing a song about freedom. We're going to declare God's freedom over our lives because he paid the price on the cross of Calvary. And because of that, we're free. And we're going to celebrate in that this evening. So if you're really ready, you're able, let's worship tonight. Amen. souls atoned by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not a slave to what once held me there. How beautiful that cleansing flood. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. All souls atoned by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not a slave to what once held me cleansing flood. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in i 
Spirit, we welcome you in this place tonight. God, we welcome you in here to, to touch our lives, God, to move through this place tonight, Father. God, that we wouldn't leave here the same as we came, God. Lord, we give you the freedom to search our hearts, Lord. We give you the freedom to reign in this place tonight, Father. Holy Spirit, come. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on as the Spirit, as the Spirit was moving. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room.
your cry tonight. Have your way tonight. Come fill us, Lord, with your 
There's nothing like you, Jesus. No other place I'd rather be than here in your presence. Oh. Thank you for speaking tonight to us. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this house tonight. Thank you, Jesus, that when we come expecting, God, that you do more. You move, God, when we expect it, Lord. God, I just pray that you would continue to be with us through this service. God, that our hearts would be open and hearing and listening, God, for your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Feel free to grit those around you. Say hello to somebody that you might not know. Welcome to Living Springs. These are your announcements. Evening service, Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday. Prayer, 6 p.m. Service, 6.30. Intercessory Prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Men's, Women's, and Youth Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Men's Breakfast and Paint, April 6th at 8 a.m., Living Springs. Guest Speaker, Deke Silverman, April 14th. Women's Meeting, April 14th. Hey, church! We need volunteers! LS Kids, LS Worship, LS Nursery. Ask a leader today. Connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Have a great service. Hallelujah. How we doing tonight, church? Hallelujah. Can we get a shout of praise to Jesus tonight? Come on. Woo! I don't know about y'all, but I love midweek service because I need it more than ever this week. <laughs> Woo! The presence of God is in the house tonight, y'all. Man, come on. I just want to take a second to welcome all our, our guests tonight. Uh, those watching by live, thank you for tuning in faithfully every week. We love you guys online, okay? We ain't forgot about y'all that tune in on live. We love y'all. Also, uh, just want to take a second. Uh, we have visitor cards. If it's your first time, second time, third time, and you ain't filled this guest card out, raise your hand up. We got ushers in the back. They do an incredible job, and they'll give, it, give you the card. Just fill out some information for us so we can follow up with you guys and just pray with you. And also, guys, prayer requests on the back. Uh, feel free to join us every Monday night at 6 o'clock and Wednesday at 6 o'clock for intercessory prayer. And God bless each and every one of y'all. And God bless for a great service tonight. Amen. Come Amen. on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Love you too. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, welcome. Come on, just welcome the Holy Spirit a little bit more, would you please? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're here because we need more of you. Amen. Come on, welcome him in this place, would you please? Welcome him here. Welcome him in your heart. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Shh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we wait on you, Father. We wait on you, Father. We wait on you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Father. Mm. God is so good. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches in Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Come on, church. 
for they gave according to their means, as I can testify and beyond their means, of their own account, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to be to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that he had started so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. This group of people in Macedonia, they just simply fell in love with Jesus. Come on, amen? They fell in love with Jesus. And out of that, birth a ministry. Out of falling in love with Jesus, I don't think y'all are hearing me tonight. Out of falling in love with Jesus, birth, amen, a giving heart. Come on. Out of falling in love with who? Jesus, amen. God gave them great purpose. I don't think y'all are still getting it tonight. Out of falling in love with Jesus, amen, God says that you can do great and mighty things. Are y'all understanding a little bit better now? That when you fall in love with who? Anything's possible. Anything. Say that with me. Anything. For they gave according to their means. The means are what? What you have. You can't give what you don't have, right? You got to give out of who you are. It didn't say that they gave out of their great wealth of treasures, did it? No, man. No, sis. It said they gave what they had because they gave with all joy. And that was the great reward. And so Paul preached that to the church in Corinth. Because Corinth had much. That's like, that's like us, amen, doing something for Jesus. And somebody went to, amen, First Baptist Church down there and said, Hey, have y'all heard about Living Springs Assembly of God Church? Have y'all heard about that church, what they're doing for God out of what they have? It ain't much, but they're doing it. Amen. That's what Paul is saying here. Praise the Lord. That God can do so much out of so little when we walk in faith and joy. Faith and joy. When you fall in love with Jesus, when you fall in love with who? Anything is possible, isn't it? Proverbs 11.25 says, whoever brings blessing will be enriched. Do you have blessings in your hand tonight? And whoever waters will himself be watered. I want the presence of God to water me tonight. How about you, church? I want him just to pour over me. I'm here because I love him. I love you, Jesus. Come on and say that with me, please. I love you, Jesus. Water us tonight, Father, with your spirit. Water us by your spirit, by your presence. Water us tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The question is, would you like enrichment to come to your life? Do you need watering today? Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Ushers, you guys can come forward. We're going to pray over this offering, this tithe tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Out of their means they gave. It may be a dollar. It may be a quarter dollar. It doesn't matter. Out of your means you give because it's with joy that you do it. We had some little trinkets that were given in the BGMC offering. Some little trinkets that, you know, belong to somebody personally. Personal giving, right? Found them up here on the pulpit this afternoon when I came in. Thank you, Ms. Brenda. People give what they have because it's what they have. The Lord knows the need of the house. He knows the need of the ministry. And all he says to us is that we just abide in that. We just give because God says give. Amen. There's some ways to give on the screen if you're giving online. You can scan the QR code on the back of one of our bulletins. Thank you, Jesus, for giving hearts tonight. That one day, this church, amen, would be testified of by somebody. Saying, this is how you do it, boys and girls. This is how you give unto the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the blessing of giving tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for every heart here that is worthy of you knows Jesus.
give some of that heart of love and kindness and grace. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. say I'm free I'm free indeed amen you are if the Lord is for you who can be against you come on freedom freedom Jesus great song Lauren thank you for that tonight we worship the most high king because he's worthy of our praise somebody say thank you Lord for that thank you Jesus trust in him tonight's message trust in who in him Trust in Him. You got to trust in Jesus. Amen. Apart from Him, it's hard. Can somebody testify the world's hard? Come on. Come on. Yeah. The world's tough out there, baby. There's a lot of stuff going on in this world that will mess you up. <laughs> a lot of stuff that we have to deal with as, as believers in Christ Jesus. A lot of things, man. Hey, brother, come here. Come here. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you. Come here. God said to give you something. This young guy is fixing to go to, to the military, right? You fixing to go to service? Amen. Yeah. His name is Caleb, right? He's Caleb. In olden days, they used to give somebody a warrior, somebody that they saw the good work of their life, a sword. Tonight I don't have a sword, but I want to give I want to give you that. When you came in, I was gonna I was gonna do it then, but the Lord said, wait. He said, wait for this moment. Because we need to pray over you as a congregation, right? Because the Lord's fixing to do something incredible through this Caleb. Would you extend your hands towards this young guy? Father, we just lift him up to you tonight. Thank you for Caleb. <laughs> Lord, put the jawbone in his hand, Lord Jesus, and let him go to work. I ask you, Lord God, tonight you give him courage and strength. Lord, he's taking a big step going into the military, and there's a lot of things going on in our military that need help. I pray, God, you would put a word inside this man's heart that would come out of his lips. Father God, that would help people, not just to defend our nation, but to defend the one true living God. Thank you, Lord God, for strength in this man, for wisdom, for courage, for faith. But even more so, thank you for his love for you, Lord, that's in his heart. That nothing, no weapon, come and form against him and prosper. I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, are y'all praying tonight? I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'd be with this young guy. That you'd help him. God, go before him and bless him. Keep him. Sustain him in this venture, Lord. Open doors of favor upon his life and his heart and give him blessing. Lord, let him honor you in everything that he does. While he's wallowing, Father God, crawling through the muck and the mud, while he's getting shot at, Lord, while he's getting beat on, God, let him remember the cross. Let him remember what you did, Jesus, on that cross for his life, that you were the first soldier that showed us the way. And I thank you that Caleb will remember his Lord in his time of need, in his darkest of hours, and he'll call on that name that's above all names. The name Jesus, the name Jesus will ring from his lips as his Savior. Bless this soldier, Lord God. Bless this young guy. Protect him and bring him home safe to us, Lord. Bring him home safe to his family, to his mom and dad, to his, his, his grand, grandpa and grandpa, grandma. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing him, Lord. 
with your protection and favor in Jesus' name. Amen. We honor you tonight, pal. We just say blessings over you in Jesus' name. Give this guy a hand. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Trust in him. Who here struggles with trust? Come on, I'm going to raise my hands because that's a thing sometimes, right? Every one of you are to raise your hand in this place. Because trust is a thing. Especially when you're, when you're facing the unknown. When you don't know what's next or when you meet somebody new, right? Anybody ever had somebody come up brand new and start just shouting some orders at you? <laughs> maybe at work, maybe a new boss, maybe a boyfriend, girlfriend, right? What's going on? No, this ain't going to work out for me. Yeah, I don't know you well enough just yet for you to be talking to me like that, right? <laughs> I said Sunday because I was preaching pretty heavy, man. I, I said, you know, I, I, it sounds like I'm shouting, but I'm, I'm just passionate, right? And we had some new people in the congregation, so I had, to, I had to let them know I wasn't mad at them, right? I'm just preaching the word because I'm passionate about the word of God. And I want the people, I want you to get it. I want you to trust the word, right? Yeah. Monday night, we were praying right here in front. We just made a little circle with all the chairs. And we started praying, Lord, send your presence, send your fire. Send your Holy Spirit. Why is that so important that we pray like that? Because without the Holy Ghost, you, it's hard to trust anything. But when the Holy Spirit, but why, why, why is it hard to trust? Because your flesh gets in the daggum way all the time. Man, I'm telling you. I'm sitting in my house sometimes and I'm praying and I feel like I got something heavy on my heart for somebody, the Lord will drop somebody's name in my, in my, in my spirit, and I just, start, I just start praying for that person, but the devil's over here whispering in my ear like, no, nah, no, nah, they're going to mess up this week, just watch and see, they ain't going to make it, they're going to do something that, that's off color, they're going to do something that they shouldn't, they're going to be in their flesh all week, and yeah, it ain't going to work out, just always. But when I call on the presence of the Holy Ghost to come and start to speak to me about that individual, you know what happens? A spirit of peace washes over me. Come on, somebody say amen. And the Holy Ghost starts to give me a new word for that person. A manna word. Say it with me. Manna word. you got to have some manna word for your life. I don't think y'all heard that. you got to have some word in your heart, amen, that will change something. If you're just trying to walk it out by flesh, you just walking it out. I tell people this, if you think you're leading and you're leading in your flesh, you're just taking a walk. You ain't leading nobody. Turn around, ain't nobody by there. You're just shouting at people, right? You're just beating people over the head with the gospel. You can't do that, right? I heard a pastor say one time, I preach the real truth in my church, but there ain't nobody there. I wonder why. Because you've got to walk in love, 1 Corinthians 13. You've got to walk up in fellowship with somebody, right, brother? Right? Why? Because you need the Holy Spirit, first of all, to come into that, that pocket, that moment, so that love can be presented first, right? Jesus, God is what? Say me. Love, right? He's God of love over the start of your circumstance and the end of your circumstance because he's Alpha and Omega, beginning in love and ending in love. You may say, oh, man, but God, he didn't hurt a lot of people. A lot of people have died because of God's ways. A lot of people died because they rejected love. Huh? Not a lot of amens right there. They rejected love. Love, right? Because they were rejecting the person. They were rejecting the homosexual. Huh? They were rejecting the harlot. Come on. Are y'all hearing this a little bit? They were rejecting the sinner. They were rejecting the ones that others rejected. <laughs> but when Jesus came, what did Jesus do? Say it again. Say it again. 
Say it one more time so he hears you. He loved. Because God is, what should we be? You need to be in the spirit if you're going to love. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can't love. If you don't have God, you can't love. It's impossible. You'll do a flesh love at best, phileo, right? Storge. You'll do like a father-son thing maybe. You do a phileo thing like a brother-sister thing, right? But you don't really know love until you have God in your heart and life. You don't know agape love until you know the real agape love. You don't have freedom to love until you have Jesus. First Galatians 5, or Galatians 5, 1 says, for freedom, amen, we have been set free. Jesus upon this cross, amen, we've had this up here for two months. People putting their requests for prayer over, over this cross, amen. We've been praying for these requests and these people, amen. Why? Because we want to see them free, not bound up. Not bound up in fear. Not bound up in anxiety. Not bound up in doubt about what's going to happen tomorrow. Not lost in the world. Come on. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Y'all need to get into that a little bit. There's too many bound up people, Christians, in the church today that don't know what freedom is because they walk in still in their flesh. Huh? They're still walking in their insecurities. Come on. They're still walking in this doubt life. They don't know what freedom is because they're still afraid when they go outside. They don't know because they covered up in insecurity. They're not really free. They might talk like they're free, but they don't walk like they're free. They won't share the gospel, amen, when God asks them to share and the reason is because they don't trust the Lord that put himself upon that cross to save their souls. They don't trust him. But tonight, church, I want to tell you, you've got to trust in the Lord. Somebody, please say amen. You've got to trust in Jesus. Somebody might want to sit up and dance a little bit and say, hallelujah, I got him. I got Jesus. You might want to trust in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he'll set you free. Shot the A. Somebody say, come on. Ephesians 1, get there with me. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14 tonight. This is our verse for tonight. I'm going to carry this on over into Sunday, I think. Unless he gives me something else, we're going to be talking about trusting in him. Say amen if you're there. It says, in him we have obtained. Say obtained. Now you got to say it like you're from East Texas. Obtained. I done attained it. Amen. An inheritance. Who doesn't love inheritances? Come on. I don't think y'all like them because I only heard maybe one or two amens right there. But there's an inheritance with Jesus. Come on. Having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will so that we who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to praise of his glory. I'm going to stop right there because there's a period. We have an, obtained an inheritance, but praise God, there's a list of some things that we've got to figure out. Why? Because we need wisdom tonight. Bow your heads and pray with me, please. Father, I ask you that your word would speak to your people. Father God, that they are... Hearts would be open because of your Holy Ghost giving them an open door. The way, truth, and life be revealed to them tonight, Father. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who was the Word in flesh. Come on. I thank you tonight for freedom. For freedom, for freedom to trust in you, Lord. That they would have an inheritance of faith through righteousness in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen to that, please. Predestined according to... The purpose of him, speaking of the man, Jesus, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, again, speaking of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ, speaking of the disciples, the apostles, might be to praise of his glory. They lived out their life to the praise of Jesus' glory. Come on. They lived out and walked out by faith the things that Jesus 
had taught him. My question tonight for everyone in this congregation, everyone watching by live, what has Jesus taught you that you might follow his ways? What do you have within your heart to know is true? Now, if you, if you don't have a whole lot of truth inside of you, you can't raise your hand and say, yeah, I know truth. That would be a lie. But when the word of God, amen, starts to get inside your heart of hearts, then you got a little something to work with there when truth is necessary. Somebody say amen. And you got situations in your life because everybody was raising their hands about this trust issue that are going to come up for you where you need some word of truth to speak to these things. Amen. God wants you to know that it's for His glory when He does the work inside of you. But He goes on to say, Paul goes on to say to the church in Ephesus, In Him, Jesus, you also... When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, say, I believed, we're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee, say guarantee, of our inheritance, say inheritance again, until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. What is the inheritance, you might ask? Well, there's a mansion being built for you in heaven. Mm, mm, mm. It ain't being built here. It's being built somewhere else. A better place. A place called holy. Amen? Where the angels cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. What do they cry out? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. One day, what are you going to cry out? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And why will you do it? Because you'll be right in the middle of it. Right in the, what you say here in your sex is smack dab. Middle of it. Amen. You're going to do everything you possibly can from the inside. At your, your spiritual body, your soul will cry out. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You'll do it over and over and over and over. And you'll never get tired of saying it. Why? Because at that particular point in the eternity, you will be connected to the holy of holies. In a way that we don't have here. Right? Old Testament law, that brought salvation only for a short time. They brought penance, they brought their offerings, and they made those sacrifices. They gave them to the Levites, the priests, and they said, here, take my goat. Had to be spotless, though. Take my dove. That's all I got, it's a dove, right? Some people got goats, some people got doves. Oh, well, right? You had the wealthy and the poor back then, too, right? Didn't matter though, as long as it was brought to the Lord. Each of those things representing something, some form of sin that was in your life. But God says to us, enough of that. I'm going to give you the gift, the one sacrifice for all things, for all mankind. Somebody say amen to that, please. It's Jesus. And it's that resurrection power when we receive Christ into our hearts that we start to see, man, amen, I can do some things for God. I'm not left out here uh, just on a string like a puppet being danced around. That's not what God does. He doesn't make you a robot. If he made us all robots, let me just tell you this. If you were a robot in Christ, you would never miss it, ever. You would get it every time. But you don't get it every time, do you? Huh? Amen. you got to have some work in your heart, amen, in your life that gets it right for you. Your imperfect place, your imperfect perfect person, Christ says to you, I've done something through you. Listen to this. You can't trust anyone unless you first love someone. Let me read it again so you can hear that. You can't trust anyone unless you have first loved someone. Who's the someone? It was Jesus. Somebody say amen. You know, a child's first instinct is to love those who are caring for them. Well, if God is love, can we trust him? The question, isn't it? First John 5, 3 says this, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, read it on the screen, and His commandments are not burdensome. Why? Because when we yoke ourselves to Jesus, when we turn away from flesh, follow me here, we walk away in a new direction, away from sin nature, right? This was the old man, amen, the cross, amen, took the old man, Amen. Water baptism is a representation of the 
going away from the old man into a new man, when you walk away, amen, out of that pool of water, and you start to say to everybody, I'm a new man or woman in Christ Jesus. I have been born again. That was my public declaration of faith right there. You all saw it. Now, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to do the old things that I used to do. Somebody say, uh-huh. I'm not going to be the old man that I used to be say, yes. I'm not going to be the old lady that I used to be say, oh, yes. But you gotta, you got to mean it. There's too many people. Y'all follow me here. Too many folks still hung up doing the old man stuff. Saying, I'm a new man in Christ. And the world looks at us and says, man, I don't want any part of that. Because that looks like a lie to me. And therefore, God says, oh, I'm going to spit you out my mouth now because you just taste filthy to me. You're trying to be one thing, but you're acting like another. You're trying to do old things when I'm calling you to do new things. And my way, amen. Have you not read my word? It's not burdensome. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Did y'all hear that? Because y'all didn't say a whole lot of amens. It's a blessing when you yoke yourself to Jesus Christ in his will, in his way, in his truth. Amen. And when that truth comes on you, you can't help but stand and tell somebody how it is. I tell people all the time this. If you're not willing to share Jesus Christ, it's because you don't have him. You can't give what you don't have. Somebody, I'm going to say, you can't give what you, that's right. Man, y'all getting smarter every second y'all sitting here. Y'all, y'all know that? Y'all are some pretty intelligent Christians. By God's grace, amen. God trusts us because he loves us. Huh? <laughs> and he trusts us, amen, because he lives in us. Woo! God trusts you. The question is, do you trust him? Why? Because trust is twofold. Trust can't work just one way. Come on. If it was just one way, we would be those robots just walking around. Or the little Jesuses, you know, on our foreheads, marked around. Hey, here we are. Man, just doing my, using my Jesus thing. Whatever. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not that type of person? That'd be straight up weird to me, man. The beauty of all this is that you are who God created you to be. When God puts you together, he made you so unique. When I look around the room, ain't none of y'all alike, not one of us alike. And I am grateful for that. I mean, Mr. Wilson got his, got his color. Look at his socks, y'all. Come on, please, tell me. This guy's unique tonight, man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's because of that that there's beauty in this house. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being you. Right? Frank, thanks for being you. I wouldn't, God wouldn't want you any other way, and neither would I. Right? You've got to be who you are. But you've got to trust when God comes into your life that he's calling you to be who you are doing his will. That's the struggle with it, right? One of the questions in my, I had a, I'm doing a motivational thing, man. I got, I got a, a, a coach and everything that's helping me. And one of the questions in my class was this, and I've asked a few of this, you this question. Listen, this is a great question to ask your family. Maybe not the ones that are mad at you, but you can ask your family this question. <laughs> what do you see on the other side of me? Say that with me. What do you see on the other side of me? It's a great question, right? And if somebody is honest enough to give you an honest answer, you'll learn from that. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we look in the mirror, what do we see? All kinds of things, right? Man. Man, I'm just, I'm a, 
I'm a, I'm a failure, right? That's all I'll ever be, right? I'm going to be a poor person my whole life because that's all I know is poverty. I'm never going to win people to Jesus because I'm too afraid. I'm never going to be able to stand in the gap for anyone because I don't know how to stand in the gap for myself. I'm telling you, the gospel, when it, once it gets inside you, man, it'll change that perspective. You start to see yourself a little bit different, man. I'm, and, and let me tell you when, you, when you start to get a hold of this, the message comes alive inside of you. You know, people go visit Israel. I mean, a lot of Christians, they fly over to Israel. Why? Why do they do that, right? They want that perspective, right? They want that where Jesus walked perspective. And they want somebody there telling them, oh, this is where Jesus prayed. This is where Jesus walked. This is where Jesus was crucified. This is where Jesus was buried. And all that's a great perspective, isn't it? The Old Testament starts to, woo, okay, yes, yes, I see it now. <laughs> Praise God. But many of us can't go to Israel and get the perspective that many others have because we're not called to do that. But the calling right now is that we could see us in the image of Christ if we'll let ourselves see ourselves that way. But you've got to let flesh eyes come off of you. Them scales have got to fall. Come on, somebody. You gotta let your heart not be so hardened towards people in the world. And the biggest thing, listen to this, check this out, is you gotta forgive yourself. <laughs> is this preaching to anyone in this place tonight? If you're gonna trust the Lord, you gotta trust Him. The insecurities of who you used to be will always take you away from truth. Always. If you're walking in the, in the old man, you're not going to have truth. You're going to live lies. And the lie is what you're going to produce because that's what you have. But if you have truth, you can give what you have. Somebody say amen to that again. Then you'll give truth. And you'll walk out truth. And you'll abide in truth. And you'll want to learn more about truth. Come on. You'll want to understand truth. The word of God comes alive to me. I'm walking in Jesus now. I'm not living the life like I used to. I have something fresh, something new. Somebody shout amen to that, please. Amen. Because it's victory to know that. It's victory to have that. And it's victory, amen, to live that way. But you've got to choose life. Or the word says you'll choose death. Trust is twofold. We must trust the Lord in His leading. We must trust his word. 1 John 2, 5 says this, But whoever keeps my words, in him truly the love of God is perfected. Wow, isn't that beautiful? How John wrote that? The beloved of the Lord. He knew something about trusting Jesus. Let me read it again. But whoever keeps his words, Jesus' words, in him, you, truly the love of God is perfected. When I look around this, this space right tonight, I don't know how you see yourself, but this is how I see you, right? As a pastor looking at those whom I've been called to, to shepherd. You are men and women working out perfection in your imperfections. Let me take that a step further by saying this. You are a mess of emotions you're a mess of consciousness. You're a mess, amen, of indirection from this world who breathes li that breathes nothing but lives, lies, that's trying to work it out in a way that pleases the Lord that whom you love. Your lack of perfection is what makes you in need of a Savior. And we get to be in need of our Savior every single day of our life, don't we? Every single moment, we need Jesus. There's a sign that hangs above that back door I put there like three years ago because I was tired of looking at a clock that says, every hour I need thee. Ain't it true, brothers? Ain't it true, sisters? You need Jesus. I need Jesus. Without that, it's hard to trust him. And that's why trust is developed. Trust isn't just given, it's developed over time. If you're going to have a relationship with someone, what do you have to do? 
work on trust, right? Do you wholeheartedly just trust someone the first time you meet them? How about the first time you met Jesus? Huh? <laughs> you had to trust him at least a little bit, otherwise you would have never received him. Yeah? See, the beauty of the gospel is I'm not trying to sell you salvation. Jesus, amen, is already working on your hearts before you ever get here and hear the preaching of his word. Where you'll just simply choose salvation. And choosing that means something that you choose it every day. Trust is developed. The Lord knows when you're ready for the wilderness, right? And when your heart is young in the Lord and things are, uh, are hard sometimes for you to believe in the Lord, um, God knows where you're at. He knows that the mountains can be extremely big when you're first uh, set off in Christ, right? When you first come to know Him. Jesus in Luke 4, 1, and Jesus, though full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus was a full-grown man, been studying the Gospels, or, or the, 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 the Pentateuch all of his life, been studying, and no, he knew, amen, the law. He was a grown man at that particular point, but he still needed what? The Holy Ghost to lead him, amen? Because it was the Holy Spirit that led him into the wilderness, not himself. The flesh is weak, but the Spirit is willing. Somebody say amen. And when you are a new baby Christian, moving mountains can be a thing. But as God starts to earn your trust, the mountains of life seem to be not so intimidating. Hallelujah for that. And every trial that we walk through as believers builds a most holy faith within us to trust the Lord's leading. Somebody say amen. Isaiah 26, 4 says, trust in the Lord forever. Forever, forever. I remember the movie The Sandlot, right? And they'd hit those baseballs. And those baseballs would go over that fence, right? Who ever seen the movie The Sandlot, right? The first one. It was the best one. And they'd go settling over that fence. But what was over on the other side of the fence? The beast. The beast was there, and right? Nobody went over the side of that fence because the beast would eat you up. <laughs> Nobody did. They were afraid. They were terrified to a point of even idolizing the beast, right? The s'mores over the fire stories, right? The nighttime story they're telling. But there was this one kid, right, that didn't know any better. He said, I'll get it. I'll go. I'll do that. And then what happened? He turned around and started running towards and everybody was like, no, stop, you're going to die. The beast lives there. Don't you know the beast lives there? But he went anyway. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock. When you have everlasting faith in God, it doesn't matter what beast is before you, you'll go. When everybody else is saying, don't. Y'all catch that? Trust, right? Are y'all listening tonight? Y'all with me? Okay. Y'all getting a little tired? Y'all need some coffee? Come on. The Lord says this to you tonight. I'm going to stop right here because we're, we're, we're good. Come on up if you want to do some worship. Thank you. We're going to spend some time in the presence of the Lord tonight. Trust the Lord. Forever trust in the Lord. For He is your rock. Enduring to the end of time, which means your life. Everything that we're going through right now, look at your neighbor and say, I'm walking through something. Come on now. I'm walking through something, guys. Brother, sister, I'm walking with something with you right now. I'm walking through something. But because my faith doesn't rest in me or in men, I know I'm going to make it through. 
I know that my faith rests in the Lord of hosts. That means he's Lord of everything, all humankind. He's Lord of every angel, every seraphim, every demonic power. He's Lord of all hosts, every one of them. I need that Lord in my life. I need that God to teach me how to trust him more right now. Come on and close your eyes with me. Nobody looking around tonight, say this with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Plain and simple, I need you. I need to trust you more. Speak to me now. Show me what it is I need to know. Teach me, Spirit, so I can trust you more. Now just take a time, don't look around, wait on the Lord. Let his Holy Spirit speak to you right now. Come on. He's saying something. Turn off the things of this world. Come on, don't fall asleep. Fix your eyes on Jesus. If you can pray in the Holy Spirit, start doing that. God will give you revelation, interpretation for something. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. What is it? Holy Spirit that we need. Worthy of Lord Jesus, blessed He is. Worthy Lord Jesus, blessed He is. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray tonight. You speak to your people. That rivers of living water start to flow into them. That words of wisdom and knowledge would start to come alive inside their hearts and minds. I pray tonight, Father, that you would speak and bless those who are earnestly seeking you. Come on and raise your hands and surrender if you're seeking the Lord tonight. Come on, raise your hands and surrender if you're seeking Jesus. This is the place you want to be. This is the place, this is the atmosphere. This is where the best work is done. The worship and the preaching, they've been great. They've been great. But God, this is where the work happens. That we trust you now. Can you trust the Lord with your addiction that you might overcome it? Can you trust the Lord with your hidden sins? Can you trust him that he actually can help you with that? The Bible says, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, just right now, would you just start saying, Lord, help me. Take this thing. I trust you with it. I trust you with my life, God. I trust you with my choices. I trust you because you love me while I was still a sinner. I trusted you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I trust you, Jesus. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. the spirit was moving over the water spirit come move over us come rest on us come rest on us as the spirit was moving over the water spirit come move over us come rest on us come rest on us as the spirit Come rest on us, 
Come rest on us, come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all something right now then we're gonna we're gonna be done we're gonna be done i want you to find somebody i want you to hug them and i want you to pray over them a five a little two three minute prayer hug hug somebody find somebody hug them and then say a little prayer over them right now find somebody pray over them amen if you don't have a 
a prayer partner, come see me. I'll pray for you. Start to pray for them now. Pray for those people next to you. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Love you guys.
criminal no more. You've been liberated. Brother, we love you. We love you. Don't we love this guy? Let's applaud the Lord tonight. Amen. Trust. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And tonight we've done that, haven't we? Applaud the Lord one more time like you mean it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Do you feel victorious tonight? Come on. Do you feel victorious tonight? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you're watching on live tonight and you've gotten this far, thank you. I am praying for you. We are praying for you. Every Monday night we pray right here at the church for you. We pray for you and your families. We pray for those in your life that are lost. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for you because we love you. And if you're looking for a church home, please come and visit us. Living Springs Church, Palestine, Texas. We're not hard to find. I don't know why people say that we're hard to find. We're not. Amen. God knows exactly where we're at because he's here. Amen. He's here. Hallelujah and amen. This is the last time we're going to see this cross for a while. Can we extend our hand to this cross and pray for these needs? But Jesus, before we go, before we go real fast, we're going to lift these needs to you, Father. For every request that's been placed upon this cross, I ask you in the name of Jesus, God, that you fulfill these requests. That these petitions that have been laid before you, Father, at your feet, at your head, at your hands, at your arms, at your body, that was beaten, that was broken and bruised, that was pierced for our transgressions, that these requests, Father God, would be made known and answered in Jesus' name. Come on. Answered in Jesus' name. Answered in Jesus' name. Hear these requests and answer them, Father. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Lord. We stand with you, Lord God, victorious tonight, as well with our brothers and sisters across the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any other prayer requests tonight? Anything else we need to lift before the Lord before we go? Hallelujah. Brother Caleb, we love you. We're praying for you, man. You got a big task ahead of you. We're with you in prayer in spirit and truth, okay? This church goes with you. Amen as the Lord goes with you, brother. We love you very much. Hey, we got Sunday service coming up. Invite a friend. Because somebody in your life needs to know the power of Jesus Christ. Somebody somewhere has not had the experiences you've had in the Lord. I can tell you this. I don't know much, but I know this. When people come here, the Holy Spirit messes with them. <laughs> I don't know much, but I know that. It's because we invite him here. Somebody say amen to that. Be a witness for Jesus Christ. It's simple. If you need some little Jesuses, we can give you those. Miss Brenda, we got some more of those? Hey, can you run and get them, please? And, stand, and just stand at the back door. Before you leave, would you just grab a little Jesus? Um, take a little Jesus to somebody. That's a little one-inch toy. But, man, that one little thing will give you an hour-long conversation about the Lord. It is not hard to share Jesus. You just simply have to trust the Holy Spirit. Who here has the Holy Spirit tonight? Would you you have the Holy Spirit tonight? The Word says if you've invited Christ into your heart, brother, you just did that. Amen. Then you have the Holy Ghost. Now it's just trusting Him while He's in you. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Amen. It's power when you trust the Lord. Amen? Okay. Thank you guys very much. Praise the Lord. One more shout of praise. Yay! Hallelujah! God bless you all. Have an awesome Wednesday night.